Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we are working on a fan coil unit and we're going to be installing a wet switch flood detector. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech and we are working on a fan coil unit. This is a four pipe system. So they have heating and cooling all year round and it's provided by water. So we're gonna be installing this wet switch and the goal here is to kill the thermostat. So if there's a leak present and it's being sent, it's gonna shut off our thermostat, which is essentially gonna close our two water valves. So we don't allow any other water to continue spilling over. Here's the inside look of those two actuators. Those are two electric valves. As you can see, we have a sound. We are not calling for heating or cooling, but this valve is actually trying to spin, and that is the sound that you're hearing. That is another issue that will need to be addressed. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the wet switch. Might be a little blurry, but here is our wet switch, and we have quite a few wires on here, and here is our diagram. So if we're looking on the left side, it shows our 24 volts is our red and black wire. That's gonna go to our transformer. On the right side, we have three wires, three colors, orange, white, and green. Our green wire is our common, these are our contacts. And our orange is our normally closed. And the white wire is normally open which you could also attach to an alarm option. Here's some diagrams and specifications that came with the control, and I will show you guys a clear picture of that as well. So we're gonna use the red and black for 24 volts coming from our transformer. The common wire, which is green, we're gonna connect with our red. And then we're, the white wire, normally open, we're not gonna use. We're gonna be using the orange wire, which is normally closed. So when everything is working normally, all the circuits are closed and we're operating. And if this control senses water, it's gonna open our normally closed circuit and shut everything down. Underneath is an auxiliary drain pan and we're gonna keep the wet switch over there. So in case there's a leak, it's gonna fall into this pan and set off the sensor. From here, we're just gonna run these wires up neatly into our control panel. So here's our control panel. I noticed this cannot close because there's actually wires being stuck in here. I'm gonna see if I can also rewire this and help them out with that, as well as get my wires in there neatly and secured properly. Let's do the right thing. All right, so here's our wet switch. Mounted a little hanger there, just so it stays in place, it goes up. And now instead of those thermostat cables coming in there, I just use this cable and I cut the cover so the wires could actually come inside to the panel and you could actually close it. So that is definitely an upgrade. And let's look inside the control panel. So here's the opposite end, it's coming out. So the white wire, I just, taped it off and isolated it. So now let's go over what's going on here. So let's start with the power, which was our red and black. And we basically just connected that to our transformer. So I put the red and green together and that comes in to our hotline on our transformer, our 24 volts. And then the black, I used as a common, so I put that to the other side of the transformer. So right there, we have 24 volts being sent to our control. And from here, we're gonna worry about our contacts. Our contacts was the, uh, the orange and the green. The green, I have hooked up to my power, which is R, my 24 volts. And as far as the orange wire, what I did is I disconnected, this is the thermostat cable coming into the unit. So R is your red wire, that's your power. So the R went directly into my orange for the wet switch. 
So basically, now we have everything wired and we're gonna flip the switch. So when I, turn, when I turn the switch on, we should get a green light indicating that we have power and there's no moisture. As you can see, we have a green light. set to heat and one of those valves are opening so right now we're in function what we want is the whole unit to turn off if it senses moisture so we're gonna simulate that by pressing the rest the red button which is a test button right there we got a red signal and that's indicating that we have a leak our fan motor started and our heating valve is closing. It actually killed the power to everything. And it's like a little tip. When I wire things up, I kill the diagram above the unit, just so everything is nice and easy. So right there, we tested it out. Then we're gonna reset it. And to get the green light again. And we should be getting a call for heat again for the thermostat. So the fan should start and our valve should open any second there you go these relays closed right there indicating to send power to our heating valve so right there we just replaced it i explained how we wired everything and that's how you test everything there's our pan comes up close up all the covers and it comes in right here. Everything is tightly secured and there's slack on the wire for when you're opening and closing the control panel. Everything is now wired and we have the system operating. I'm just gonna get a temperature reading. And that's pretty much it. This is how you install a wet switch by Diversitech. If anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.